Welcome, friends, to Spreading Positivity with Mayor K, where we catch up with people who are spreading positive vibes in their communities and the world at large. Today's guest is a triple threat. He acts, he sings, he dances, and his golden blonde hair is always on fleek. His music videos have been viewed over a million, what, 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 millions of times from people from around the world on YouTube and social media. The last collaboration that we did, we jumped out of a plane at 14,000 feet in the year. Please give it up. Morty Shapiro, it's good to have you here. Hey, yo. How you doing? How you What's doing? What's up, Mayor? It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming out, my thanks man. Thanks for having me. For sure, for sure, for sure. So, listen, jumping right into it, my man, you are you are a talented individual, right? Thank you, thank you. What are you not good at? <laughs> that is, I don't know. That, I, that I, is I, literally the classic interview question. Like, you, you do a Google search. What is an interview question? What are you not good at? I and may, you know what the classic answer is? What's that? I just work too hard, you know uh, what I'm saying? I just I, I bring my work home to my family. Right, right. You you bring you bring it. You bring it. But, no, but the, on a serious but, uh, yeah, note, bring it down seriously though. What am I not good at? Or not so serious. Yeah, I'm like, not great at public speaking. Okay. Or though I truth is I don't have much experience, but people have been asking me to public speak and I'm just I'm nervous. People think, "Come on, you you're on stage in front of thousands of people. You do music videos. You're you're always in the spotlight." Shouldn't yeah. it be easy? And it's so not. It's just a different talent that I, I may not have the tools now. Maybe if I trained and studied and uh, educated myself, maybe I'd be able to improve my game there. But right, right now, speaking publicly is is a fear that I have. I hear that. You know, absolutely. Recently, I just did a public speaking course called Mic Drop with Rush Lowe. And the philosophy behind that whole program was is that most of us, all of us, we're not born not being public speakers or being afraid of the limelight. Throughout life, as kids, we, we love it. But as we grow older, stuff happens in our lives. We have challenges that you know blockade us, that block us. And then we start losing confidence and are afraid of the, of the of public speaking. And through that process, specifically with Rush Lowe, I was able to, we, he worked through my story. We figured out what what were my what things that blocked me that I want to have to work through? And then I presented that as a speech, public speaking. And so, like, my biggest fears, my biggest doubts of myself, put it out there. And through that, you know, broke my fear. Well, I always actually personally enjoy public speaking, but it was you actually— You don't or you do? I do. Yeah, I do. Actually, I always felt comfortable on stage. But actually, giving over that specific speech um, was a, a lot more— that was more exciting than usual. I was really putting right. in a place. But who knows? Maybe that's something I, right. that, you I know. I don't doubt that I can probably learn some technique mm -hmm. and delivery skills. But there's a lot of, you know, just vocabulary alone. I wasn't a big reader as a kid. And kids, read your books. And I'm trying to get my kids, my children now to read because reading is like so crucial to just expand your knowledge of history and vocabulary. And when you speak, you want to just, you can prepare, prepare. But, you know, when you have just... That sweet, sleek delivery, you know, that's something you can be, uh, you need to learn as a kid. And I, I kind of didn't read enough. So, but I, I could probably improve a little bit. I hear that. I hear that. Well, I mean, talking about it as as a kid, let's let's go back to um, just for those who are listening. Amor Hashpiro is a is a well known uh, Jewish singer. Um, you know, let's talk let's talk about like those pre days before you were known as as the Amor Hashpiro that we know today. Tell us a little bit about your history, about growing up, your family, and, and what led you to uh, to your singing career. So I grew up, grew up in Muncie, New York. I am the youngest of seven. Wow. Yeah. And uh, all six of my siblings sing. Got it. It's a kind of a cool story. My mother and father both sing. My father's been a uh, chazan in a shul for almost uh, 40 years. I was in a cantor. Is a, uh, cantor, cantor in, for, in a shul for the high holidays. And throughout the year, uh, my mother was a... Uh, was like a pro opera singer. And uh, when she was um, on the fence, when she was like 18 of of jumping into that world, um, she decided to be more religious and, you know, take another path, uh, getting married and raising a family. But she is phenomenal. And I get a lot of my color and technique from both of them um, and from my siblings. I mean, growing up, you know, our family was always singing together. At, uh, at family get-togethers and on the uh, Shabbat dinners. Um, so I learned a lot from them. And um, when I was eight, I joined Miami Boys Choir, of course. which was, uh, you know, the most well-known boys choir, Jewish boys choir at the time. And, um, you know, that was my first, uh, my first experience to being on stage in front of thousands of people, touring the world. We went on tour all over the place 
when I was eight, nine, which was pretty crazy. That's crazy. When a little I mean, homesick. I, I little remember ho- as a kid. I mean, uh, as I we used to watch the Miami Boys Choir all the time. And it was yeah. a, a dream of mine to be part of the Miami Boys Choir. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really may cool. be able to hook that up. Yeah, tilt it now today. <laughs> wow, that'd be very interesting. I mean, he's got to trim the beard, maybe. Oh my gosh! <laughs> join the Miami Boys Choir. Yeah, but, I'm sorry. Um, but that was my first experience, and uh, it homesick, gave me. Huh? Inc- yeah, it was major homesick. Major. But thank God I had my older brother, Duvi, who was in the choir with me. Mm. So, like, we'd be in, like, Mexico. I'd wake up, like, crying. He'd be like, bro, just relax. He was in the choir with you He was well. in the choir with me. Very cool. So that was great. That was great. He took care of me. And he was a big soloist. I followed in his footsteps and ended up being one of the main guys. And that gave me just incredible experience and comfort on the stage, which people even tell me now. You know, it's so apparent that... You know, there's a lot of singers out there, and, and, and like I said, speaking's not one of my things. And for some performers, performing happens to be not, not their strength, right. you know? Um, but, but being on stage as a kid gave me incredible experience in that, in that sense. And, um, you know, as I went through high school, I kind of took a break singing professionally out there. My voice was cracking, you know, as, as all uh, kids do at that age. <laughs> um, so you carried on singing through your teen years as well? I was singing, but not on any professional. Uh, just for fun. Just for fun, you know, with my buddies on the bus. In the yes. shower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right. We'll get to that. We'll get to the buzz <laughs> fiasco later on. And then when I was, uh, you know, when I, when I got my voice, my adult voice back, I jumped into training, which mm. is so crucial for any singer that wants to take themselves seriously. Training is huge. Training is a big part of your Training part is of your huge. Schedule. I still train every day. Wow. Now, I, I train with a teacher weekly, but I do the exercises myself every day, uh, whether I have a job or not, just to keep myself in, in, in my zone. Um, keep myself healthy. Um, they say your voice is like you're like the Jewish Celine Dion when it comes to it. No. <laughs> actually. One of my teachers was Celine Dion's teacher, really, believe it or not. Wow, yeah, I'm sure you said that as a joke, but yeah, that's I that's was a funny. joke, yeah, yeah. Um, I got jokes, bro. I got yeah, jokes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so William me. Riley, his name is okay. he trains Josh Groban. Train Celine Dion. Mm. So uh, we've been training for, Yo, for a little while. Give, give us a tune. Give us, give us that note. Give us mm, that magic note. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> okay. um, but uh, what else? So I jumped into training. I started slowly doing some uh, bar mitzvahs and little birthday parties for whatever people would pay me. Sometimes for no money, just to get myself out there. And this was what, specifically what time of your career? When was this? The beginning of your career where you were, you were married? You were single? I just got married. When I started doing these small parties. And you were living here in the States? I was living here in the States, and then I decided my dream was to live in Israel. So I uh, I jumped ship from here. How old were you? And you had I was 21. 21 years married, old, you got married. with a kid. Wow. Actually, when I was 21, I had two kids already. At 21, you were two kids? Yes. Holy so, moly. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my wife and I got married at 20, had a kid that's, pretty quickly. That's love. Wow. And that then a baby be, uh, another year later. So I was 21 with two little, two little, two little kids, two little girls, and uh, then we made. We and you decided right then and there. You have two kids. You just got. Let's go to Israel. I let's always had a dream go. to move to Israel. Um, you know, we did it legally. We're citizens now. Um, after a couple of years of trying to rough it there, music was very hard. You, you know, were, these you were pursuing music in Israel. I was trying, but I didn't really have the opportunity. Um, being an English speaker, is you know speaking Hebrew, I was definitely far from fluent. I picked it up, you know, um, but I was far from fluent, and uh, the Israelis were not really feeling my game. You know, <laughs> I'm an American singer. Really? I grew up on American music, Jewish, but also American, and uh, it was too hard. So after three years, my wife said, "That's it. We're going back to America," and it was a tough decision. But by but, then, you had like what ten kids? <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen. Oh, 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 no, nice. by then we still had two, okay. and uh, we moved back, and then I jumped right back in to the market over here, you know, bar mitzvahs, parties, and then wedding, and then, you know, one wedding lead to, led to another, then I made my first album, and then one of my big songs came out, and the rest is, uh, is kind of history. Wow, so let's let's go to that point. So where where exactly was that turning point from just becoming a you know, bar mitzvah mm-hmm. wedding singer to becoming the superstar that you are today. I think a lot of, um, I, I know I have personal some friends who are trying to break into the singing, into, into the singing career in, in the Jewish world, and even others, you know, there, there's always that like, okay, the safe zone of being a bar mitzvah singer, being a wedding singer, uh, a party singer. How, what do you think it was and what steps could one take, do you think, to switch over to like that, becoming that well-known brand? So it's a, great, it's a great question. When I 
wanted to get involved. You know, a lot of the bands that I I called everybody. That was my like. I don't know who told me, but just like get educated, speak to singers, speak to producers, speak to band. You know, producers, speak to anybody and everybody that you can, and just learn. And I did. And a lot of people would were not didn't have the time to give me or maybe weren't interested in giving me the time of day. This isn't a sob story. This is just the truth. They People are busy, and I get it. And for that reason now, you know, that I have uh, somewhat of a platform, I, I take every phone call. I don't care if it's an 11-year-old boy who likes to play drums I spoke to yesterday just to give him some inspiration. That's something I promised myself, that if I would ever make it in, in some way, that I'm going to help. Because when I was trying, I didn't get much help. And a lot of the bands told me, you know, your, your friends are all getting married. You're 21, 22, 23. Sing at their weddings. I would go to my friends who like my boys. Right. I'm like, bro, let me do your wedding. <laughs> and they're like, so like. <laughs> That's awkward. Dude, like, you're good. But like, right. I want I want to get the top guy. Right. You know, it's my one day. Who's the top guy? Shweki oh, or, or whoever it was. Mm-hmm. You know, Daskal. There was a couple of big wedding singers at the time. And they were like, I want this day to be the greatest. And, you know, you're really good, but I don't know if it's if it's your stage. I want you to come as a friend. You know? Come as a yeah, friend, yeah, dance, as a friend. it'll be great, yeah. you know. So uh, that was very hard. I did have a couple of bands that said, you know what, we'll give you a shot. They said, come in, sing for us. They said, we see something in you. So I did, you know, a wedding here for 400 bucks. I did a wedding here for free. I did a, a guest appearance, you know, at Avram Fried, one of the biggest singers. So I joined a wedding that he was at, and I did, like, two songs just to like get my feet wet and um you're grinding and one one leap of faith that I did have to take when I I used to do one man band stuff me and a keyboard at like these bar mitzvahs and people you know I would tell people or, or even at an engagement party and I would be like yo I'm a wedding singer and they'd look at me and like you know giggle a little bit and be like dude you're 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 so good at engagement parties you're so good but you're not a wedding singer and I would be like why not they like you 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 in the keyboard you know that's your jam oh. So I decided one day, I told my wife, I'm dropping the keyboard. People cannot see me with a keyboard because, you know, when people see, you know, when people see something, that's just the way they apply their minds. And he's a keyboard player and he's not big leagues. So I said, you know what? No more keyboard. Dropping it. Wow. And um, it must have been hard because it was very hard. I was making I was making money. Right. You know, I was making 500 bucks. Engagement parties, like I said, birthday parties, two, three a week. I was making solid money, um, but I dropped the keyboard. It was a major leap of faith. I had a, I, I didn't take any engagement parties. People were calling me. They're like, what do you mean? You're the guy. You're the you're sick engagement party, birthday parties, 11-year-old. Bir-. I said, I'm not doing it. And then one wedding came, and then another wedding came, and then I just hopped into the wedding market. Boom. So that's how it kind of uh, went down. That's incredible. So it's like you're, what you're saying is like you didn't have much of a plan. You have to like you – know, there's that quote. I mean paraphrasing it where like you have to like leave – to like find new lands, you have to like leave side of the shore. Right. So like you have to let go of that keyboard. Even though it's comfortable, you have the money, you have the flow of income coming in. And like this is not it. It's not the brand I want to build for myself. I have to right. go out and do that. That takes a lot of courage and a lot of guts. A hundred percent. That's actually – I mean as, as you and I got close over the last few years, we've had a lot of good talks about yeah. believing in yourself and – it's hard, you know? It's, it's, I don't know if it's something that you can learn or you can train or you can teach. I mean, we, we try to get inspired. We watch your videos. We watch, I watch inspiration, inspirational videos all the time. You know, be it like, um, you know, a little marathon in, in the Olympics, you know? Right. I'm sure you've seen that major viral video where a guy, like, twists his ankle yeah, or pulls his hamstring and, yeah. and his dad comes and I, holds that, him up. And literally, walks. I'm bawling every time I watch that. <laughs> But um, but I try to take that and not just watch it and and I try to seize that feeling, and sometimes we have to take a leap of faith, a leap of faith, and those eventually hopefully lead to uh, along with everything else. You know, it's not always just about passion. I'm I'm rambling so much. I feel I'm not no, even letting you talk. But you're, this, you know, it's I about me, Morty. It's all about you, baby. I tell people that like people think that you know if you have the passion, then you're gonna succeed. It's not that simple. You know, sadly, there are a lot of people. I mean, we we watch American Idol. We see some people that are like they swear they're going to be. Did it. I did. They 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 swear they're going to be the next American Idol, right. and then they get up there and, and we're like, "Come on, man!" <laughs> like, you know, sometimes <laughs> yeah, the judges that. are laughing, sometimes the crowd is laughing, and right. and they 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 promote that because they know it's funny. Hmm. There are people that they're out there that are that are delusional. So it needs to be paired with talent. You know, hard work, training, and that passion. And when you put everything in the package together, 
you know, that's what leads to uh, hopefully the ultimate success. 100%. 100%. So when it comes down to, like you're saying, believing yourself and what, did you have somebody in your childhood who believed in you? Do you have a mentor that pushed you? Or was it just always the internal dialogue within yourself, like, hey, Morty, I could do this, I could do this, I'm focused, and this is my dream, I want to make it happen? You know, uh, again, it always seems like such a cliche answer for me to say that I, I didn't have major inspiration pushing me into music. Um, you know, I don't want to... <laughs> I'm afraid if my mom hears this, she's gonna like. <laughs> like my mother now is very proud of me. She comes to all my shows. Was she not at sometimes? When I was like in my teenage years, and I said I wanted to be a singer, I can't say she was totally on board. She, you know, she said, "Why don't you be a doctor? Be a lawyer? Be, you know, nice Jewish mother." Because, I mean, and I hear like, how many singers make it? It's hard. You know what I mean? It's not so easy. if you look at the statistics, I mean, in a secular market for sure, how many non-Jewish singers are? amazing amazing singers that just they're 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 begging for a job in a club for 100 bucks and if they get that they're hot. you know if they're not doing that they're singing somewhere else for free just to try to get their names out there there's so many people that can't make it so you know my mother was neither here nor there she wasn't she wasn't totally ecstatic about it um but i i i had my own kind of inspiration that i would not give up Mm. I knew that I, I, I felt that I had what it, what it took, and, um, and I, I went for it. But now she's, now she's on board. When was that turning point for your mother when she was like, okay, wow, Morty, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I can see that this is actually working out, and like, I'm proud for you or support you in this. Like, was there uh, well, a I think moment? a lot of people in their college years have a lot of dreams, you know, many of them being unrealistic, um, some being maybe a little bit more practical. So, you know... I'm I'm wondering how I'm gonna treat my kids if my kids said I want to you know I want to be in a band. It's like a total like joke. Like imagine like in a movie and like you know the son-in-law wants to be like. I remember telling my in-laws that I wanted to be a singer. How'd that go? And they're like, "What, dude? Are you kidding me? Like <laughs> this is who we married our daughter like, off to?" And they like a my dreamer. father-in-law was like, "It's very protective yeah. of his daughter, my my wife." And they were like, "Not so down." He's like, "Listen, you can just have a profession. You want to be a plumber." That's cool. You want to be an electrician? That's cool. Just have a trade. And I was like, singing is my trade. Singing is what I do. I'm good. And I, but at that time, I had nothing going for me. Like I said, I was doing birthday parties. You know, I'm like, I got, I got to leave this convo. I got a birthday party <laughs> at two good o'clock. Talk, good talk, good talk. Seven year old birthday party. And uh, you know, it, it's it, and I get it. You know, if my son, if I had a son in law that told me he wanted to sing. I'd probably also, even though I'm a singer, I'd probably also be a little, I don't know, hesitant because it's, like I said, so few make it. Um, That's interesting. So even though you're, and I'm not, you you broke through the fact you you actually became a success through it. You would still have a hesitancy to support your the younger generation or your children to pursue their dreams. Yeah, I, I I would be a little hesitant. You know, obviously I would be able to if I can help in any way. I obviously would, um, and I know that there's you know there's 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 careers to be made and money to be made in this industry, thank God. Um, but I, I would, you know, like I said, there are people that are delusional out there. I'm sure, you know, I don't know, I can't believe I'm talking about my daughter getting married. This is a crazy <laughs> thought. How old is she? She's eight. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But, but like, I'm just, you know, we're just talking yes. uh, yeah, yeah, philosophy. Go for it. Flow, if she, uh, you know, if she told me that her, 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 her dude wanted to sing, her, her husband-to-be wanted to sing, I would probably check him out and... I hear the... <laughs> you know, that was my see if there was like sound. something there or something you know not there, and then you know I would I, I wouldn't just say chase well, you'll your train dreams, him. You could train your, him. Yeah, if I thought it was worth it, I would train him. <laughs> I would train him. But what's more worth it than your future brother that doesn't exist yet? That's right. <laughs> son in law, son in law, son in law, son in law. Right, but I think the turning point for my mom was when she saw that I was serious. Like I said, you know, so many of us have these dreams, but end up going on a more practical um, route to success and and um when she saw that i was like i was doing it i was spending money and i was practicing every day so 
I think that's key. When, when I think when our parents, like, I could relate to their story 100% because I had this, I, I still remember until today, sitting in the kitchen, it reminded me of like this um, interrogation room of sorts. It was really, it was dark outside. It was nighttime, one little light hanging in the kitchen. Then right. my dad, mom sitting there. And, like, Love I, it. I'm sitting there. I was between uh, two schools because I was, once again, a mutual agreement that I should leave uh, from that school. I was happy <laughs> that I was going. They were happy I was going. And I was, my parents were like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to be an actor. I want to be in the entertainment business. And, you know, the same reaction was like, seriously, though, like we had this conversation before this it's not possible you can't right. I mean you're, you're you're orthodox jew and the whole world of right. that it's this doesn't go together and i was just passionate i was gun-ho and um and for this for the longest of time my parents were hesitant you know they also they right. want sec- they want security for their of kids course. right there's and nothing wrong with that no 100 percent. and there's it's out for, and they're looking out for our own best interests yeah, but of course we have their passions and and so i kept on pursuing that and i think it was only a turning point for my mother was when she i think she was when she started receiving my videos on her on her class whatsapp groups you know for a reunion that's like, awesome so when she started getting that from her friends sending my videos to her she was like all right this kid's onto something right always supportive always loving but like she really came around to was that was like, that your first viral video those were my first viral videos. so same here exactly yeah. my schar mitzvah which is which was was which was my first you know major viral video um i think that's what maybe led my mother and father to just be like wow this is kind of legit um, we have no other choice but to support. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> yeah. mom, dad. I love you guys. Yeah. But uh, you know that was that was the turning point for her. That's awesome. That's awesome. So shifting to like Schar Mitzvah, and you have so many great hits. There, there has to be a pattern. I mean, you have an ear for music. You know how to sing. You know how to dance. But like, what does that process look like when it comes to music? You know, how does that look? Is it you know with the you obviously have an ear for it? Is it the tunes? Is it the words? What connects with you that you're like, okay, this is a hit. I want to make this happen. So when I started, you know, I used to compose a little bit in high school. And um, when I started getting into the business on a serious level, you know, when I wanted to make an album, I was very insecure about writing my own music. Um, you know, I, I just didn't know how the world would take it. And I was like, I'm a young kid and I can sing, but composing is a whole different world that I just don't know if I can put myself out there, you know, because I'm already putting myself out there so much with my voice. And, and it's going to be all over iTunes and YouTube and, 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 and the stores you know, my, my album. So that was enough for me to put out there. I was nervous about composing, but, um, I put one of my songs on my first album, which didn't really go. It was a slow song, emotional kind of song, um, with a nice message. Didn't really go. So it didn't help with my confidence, but I, I, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm a passionate guy. I believe in myself and I kept working on it. My second album, I wrote the song Machar, which is called, uh, you know, in tomorrow it means in in English. What's the theme of that song? What's the what's the message? Machar um, Shemesh means tomorrow the sun will rise. So we, anybody that finds themselves in a troubled time, um, you know, be it a tragedy or you lose a job or you're going through um, family issues or whatever you may find yourself in, uh, the message of the song is to remind you that you know there's a tomorrow. And tomorrow the sun will rise. Tomorrow your your future will be brighter if you just you know pick your head up and uh, you 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 keep yourself inspired and you don't get stuck into your in your misery. Um, was that there's s- always hope. So that song I wrote and and that was really like my my first song that went crazy. I mean it has almost three million views now on YouTube, wow. and um, it was a powerful message. Um, I think a song needs a, a, you know lyrics that are powerful, that are moving. Obviously, melody is very important, um, as important. And then a video, you know, a video's... Uh, people argue, you know, how important a video is when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, a rock song. Even some of the best songs in the world, you know, if you put a lousy video with it, would it still go viral on YouTube? Probably. I mean, you can argue about that for, for a while, you know, but, but I put together nice videos... And um, and that showed me that people can embrace my compositions. So now I write and I work with other composers. And um, I wrote a couple of other songs, which did really well. Uh, the song that we just did together, Friends. Yeah, Friends was great. I co-composed um, with my producer, Yitzi Waldner. That was, an, that was a crazy turnaround as well. Like that, yeah. was, that was a whole crazy mission. I want to talk about that in a minute, but just on the topic of what you're saying about Machar, I love the whole message of it. Like the, the sun's coming up tomorrow, tomorrow. Exactly. I love it. Does uh, that song um, specifically, did that, was there something in your life that was going on that inspired you to like, compose that, to, to bring that to life? Um, I mean, there, there's always, you know, we go through a lot of things. Um, you know, I was close with a uh, a rabbi who lived in Israel, 
who was a very righteous big tzaddik. Um, his name was Rav Avram Brandwine, and I was close to him. I was lucky to be close to him for many years. Um, he guided me, my family, through a lot of things when I was living in Israel. And um, he died um, of cancer. And uh, that was very hard on me, my wife, and our family. And just, you know, that was our, our, that was our, our leader. You know, he was, he, was, he was helping guide us. Um, so when he passed on, it was, it was very hard. So moments like that gave me um, the inspiration to write about remembering the future and that there is, there is a bright future ahead for me, for my family, and, and really for everybody. And it's a message that never gets old because we're always going through, through troubling times, you know. Um, so that's, that's, that's part of the inspiration for that song um, and also, you know, other troubling times that I went through. So... I hear that. Yeah. Are there other? I mean, um, other moments when you're like you show up to a gig or you're, you know, you're performing, and maybe something happened that day, and you're not in the mood to go out there and to be this, you know, the the performer that you are, and to bring out these positive messages. Like, do those moments happen? And if they do, how do you push through that? So there are definitely times where I'm, uh, you know, I can't lie and and say that I have a hundred percent of the energy, every job going in. Although I, I, I'm pretty sure that by, you know, once I'm starting and I'm on stage, I get myself to that energy. But after doing three, four jobs a week, sometimes five in crazy wedding season or concert season or like on Hanukkah or on some of these big Jewish holidays, I'm doing, um, you know, sometimes 10 jobs a week. Wow. That's and, insane. you know, I, I got to be careful not to get burnt out. Um, so some ways I do that is, you know, I have outlets. Obviously, my wife is very supportive. She's a rock star. I'm, I have four kids now, thank God, and she's always there, um, you know, holding the fort down. Um, and it's also doing some some private um, some private visits. Sometimes give me the inspiration to to go on. A couple of days ago, I don't usually publicize these because uh, you know I want it to be about the the moment. But a couple of days ago, I I, I went to visit a girl who's, who's eight years old. Um, who has leukemia, and she was having a birthday party, and singing a song like Machar was, I almost couldn't get through the song. Wow. Um, I mean, I was in tears. I saw her father was in tears. Um, you know, just thinking about how she is going, what she's going through, and they told me she loves this song, and it, and it gives her joy when she's in the hospital, and those kind of things, that kind of feedback, and that moment for me is what is able to... Uh, you know, get me through, um, you know, times where I may not have the energy. You know, I just think about a moment like that, and uh, it gives me the inspiration to uh, to keep moving. You know. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's 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 extremely powerful, and that's that's amazing. And to be a cause for so many people's, um, you know, positive outlook in life, and to put and help them get through. You know, there are tough times. I found with myself when, yeah, when, when I'm making someone else smile, it takes away a bit of my pain, you know, and makes, it makes me feel good. A thousand percent. Yeah. That's one of the most amazing things. I mean, obviously getting, you know, getting money to, to do what we do is great, but when we can make a difference and it's just a uh, shame Shemayim, as we say, you know, for, for really uh, no ulterior motives, um, just because we know we can make an impact on somebody's life um, for no money, those are almost, you know, those are the most real uh, moments that we can grasp and be a part of and you know those are so crucial for making me who I am and I'm sure for you as well you know oh yeah abs I mean th absolutely um taking a taking a quick shift to um to into the into the music world you know you've been you've been singing since you were a child right you've been around and actually there's a I came across a video with you singing with Shweki, right. with Jakob Shweki, um, at a concert. Which concert was that? Hatzala, United Hatzala in Israel. Hatzala. And yeah. then I just was in Israel right now. You just sang for them now as Mordechai Shapiro sharing with Oh, Jacob. oh, yeah. That was this concert was United Hatzala. The one when I was a kid yeah, was with uh, Miami Boys Choir. Oh, that was Miami Boys Choir. Miami Boys Choir, Choir like Brooklyn College. Rachim. Rachim. Wow, very cool. So you've been you, so you've been in the music in the, in the Jewish music industry for some time now, right? And now we're here in 2018. You know, a bunch of years later. How do you feel the the Jewish music industry has shifted and changed, or has it, from when you were a kid in Mary Boys Choir till till now? Well, it's it's changed in a lot of ways. I think everybody knows that you know CD sales and streaming has you know has changed because of iTunes. Um, you know the whole uh, 
YouTube has changed um, music videos. You know, um, actually, funny when I did that Rachim video with Shweki in two thousand and one or so, there was no YouTube. So a couple of years later, YouTube came out. Two thousand five was it? Two thousand five, something like that. Yeah, two thousand five. Two thousand five, two thousand six. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. <laughs> we're a social. I'm a social media expert here. And I'm right. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, we were young, but. Yeah. Uh, Fact, yeah, that's what you guys are there for, Brandon. When was YouTube started? <laughs> 2005. My man. We're gonna go 2005. So, uh, in 2005, somebody like sent me this video of me and Shweki. It had like a million views, and I'm like, "What is YouTube?" They're like, "YouTube is like this new thing where you could share videos." I'm like, "What? A million views? What is this? What is like TV? It's like I don't even know what it is." But a million um, Jews, right? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Something about the video. I mean, I heard a lot of Christians are inspired by this video because the words are about you know rebuilding the temple uh, of Israel, and um, I was blown away. Uh, so YouTube has has been a game changer. You know. Um, Albums don't sell like they used to because people can share and people can illegally share and download mm -hmm. from YouTube or in their own ways. Um, so YouTube, you know, uh, music videos has become a major part of of uh, of an artist's uh, industry. Um, yeah, I mean, it's changed in a lot of ways, but uh, so, I mean, and the style of music has it become has it shifted from I mean, from the like from the sounds of of yesteryear. Yeah, of, like, def 20, definitely, and, definitely. Jewish music is, is is has always been similar in a you know in a sense to secular music, even though it's so different. We're singing Hebrew. We're singing about you know uh, Jewish concepts and themes. But in terms of the style and genre of music, there's always been comparisons, you know, in terms of like the 90s uh, electronic, um, you know, how would you call that? You know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about, totally. like that the, '90s the feel. Whole, like, so, if you of... listen to like the secular stuff and the Jewish stuff, like they're similar beats, similar sounds. You know, like the, you know that. that... Hey. <laughs> right. So yeah. that started in uh, in you know, and then 2000. You know, the genres keep changing. Um, now pop music is so huge, so vast in secular market and also in the Jewish market. There are sounds that have never really been um, out there. You know, we're, we're we're putting out there, and uh, the world's embracing it. Mm. The Jewish world, for sure. And I mean, someone like yourself, you're 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 an individual. You're different, I would say, in a very good way from all the types of other singers out there. Do you find yourself being a Jewish singer in in the religious sect? Um, Restricted from the type of projects you want to get involved, with, the type of music you want to sing, is there? Do you find like sometimes that you want to self-express through music, but feel that you can't because um, in the in the in the music industry that you find yourself in? I mean, there's always, uh, I guess, there's always certain restrictions, but I try to, you know, my perspective has to be that that I'm in the best position that I could be, and I'm just enjoying and loving what I'm able to do. Um, so I try not to focus on restrictions. You know, obviously. You know, if I can target a more secular market, I mean, there's hundreds of millions of Americans. There's there's so many people out there. The Jewish market is very small. Um, there's only a certain amount of... I mean, there are plenty of Jewish weddings and plenty of Jewish concerts. Right. But, you know, there are bigger opportunities in the secular market. But, you know, that would compromise all of my, you know, my my family life. My, my being a Jewish Orthodox singer would be totally compromised if I would jump into the secular market. So, yeah, there are restrictions there, but like I said, it's all about perspective and appreciating the opportunity that I have, you know, for where I'm at. There's plenty of plenty of events to go around, plenty of concerts. So, thank God. I've known of you for for many, many years, but we've gotten close over the past couple of years through different projects and such. And more recently, like you mentioned, the the Friends video, and I've really came to really appreciate you as an individual, like <laughs> as like you know, taking away all the glitz and glamour. Just right. like you know, I get this phone call from from Mordechai um, saying like, "Hey, this is a song. We're doing a song called Friends, and it's the concept of uh, just you know, just having a good time, appreciating the friends in one's life, and like who they are and how they they affect us in a positive way. Love it. I mean, it was a hit from the get go. <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, I just want to you know, just uh, get a get a RV and." Uh, go with some friends and uh, go on a road trip. Right. I'm like, count me in, man. <laughs> like, this is right up my alley. Yeah, you were perfect. I mean, right from the get go, I was like, 
I gotta call Mary Kay because like this is so your jam, yeah. so your jam. You asked me like, what should we do? I'm like, um, hmm, skydive, <laughs> right? And that was that you was, did bring that, yeah, that, that was awesome. That was that was amazing. And um, we, I know initially we want to try to do the RV. Yeah, the um, RV. That was a that, but everything a, was out everything has a story. It all worked out. I, every, I tried to get an RV. I was scammed, guys. When you're renting an RV, just watch your watch yourself. Okay, there's a lot of scammers. It was bad, but we ended up getting that. You hooked us up with that bus, yeah, which was epic. And the skydiving. I remember like people keep asking me like, "Did your wife? She was cool with that?" And I was like. So I wasn't sure. I wasn't gonna tell her at first because I just wanted to like make sure that I could do it for the for the video, and um, you know. So finally, one of my friends told me like his wives aren't letting his wife isn't letting him go. So I said, you know, I should probably ask my wife. So I went up to her and I was like, so on the trip, you know, I just wanted to go over some of the some of the deets with you, some yeah. of the activities. I'm like, we're gonna be going like. Um, you know, we're going boating and we're going like hiking and we're getting a bus and we're going skydiving and we're going to be eating and we're going to be doing like... <laughs> just slip it in Yeah, there. I just slipped it. I slipped it right <laughs> the in. fine print on yeah, the bottom. Yeah, exactly. And she was like, what did you say? Uh, skydiving? That. And then there was like a pause. And she's like, that's awesome. I'm like, what? Wow. What? Are you oh, kidding me? Wow. You don't care about Mr. my Shapiro, life? Shapiro, you're a rock star. You don't care about oh, me? Was- yeah, I got mad. I'm like, what about, you know, my friends don't like... <laughs> no, it was awesome. I'm so glad she let me go. And uh, it was like ridiculous. Wow, yeah, that ridiculous. was that was amazing, man. I'm I'm excited for many more adventures with you. Yeah, Marty. me too. Me Seeing too. Where you go and how you're growing, and it's really incredible to see how your impact you're having um, on the world at large and the community, and it's really inspiring. And happy to have you in my life, man, and have you as a friend. Thank you for being here today, Mayor. Thanks for having me, bro. I yeah. love chilling with you, uh, <laughs> and I can't wait for the next time. Amen, amen. Um, and hey, uh, give a shout out to all the people who are listening to where they can find you on social media and such. Morty Shap on Instagram. My name is Morty Shap on Instagram and Facebook, and um, I never really got into Snapchat that YouTube? much. YouTube, obviously, uh, Mordechai Shapiro, um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Amazing, amazing. Morakashbio.com, my website. I don't know. Original. Try to do a little of this, a little of that. What's yours? You have a website? Yeah, Americare.com. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. But uh, hey, dude, I really appreciate it, man. Morty Schaff here, guys. And uh, thank you all for watching and listening to another episode of Spreading Positivity with Mayor K. Big shout out to my main man, Morty Shapiro, for coming in today. As well as, hey, if you loved it, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, on YouTube, on all tubes. Just do it if you enjoy it. And if you found something valuable from me listening today, please share it with your friends and family. It goes a long way. Why not spread that positivity? And like I always say, stay positive, be happy. I'm Mayor K. Have a great day.